Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today's Makeup Monday video is a full face of classic Chanel makeup. Many of you I'm sure already know this, but if you didn't know already, years ago back in 2015, I was the Chanel counter manager at the Green Hills Mall in Nashville at Nordstrom. So a lot of these pieces that I pulled out from my collection, I first fell in love with when I worked at the counter. And I would use them as part of my everyday makeup for work. And I also used them on my clients constantly. These were our top selling products because I loved them so much and this is what I would show people. I also think this is a great maybe intro to Chanel video. If you're not as familiar with Chanel makeup and you're looking for those staple pieces, I highly recommend all of these and I think they truly belong in any luxury makeup collection. This will come as no surprise for people who have watched me for a long time, but I'm going to begin with the Chanel CC Cream, one of my all-time favorite products. This is just one of the best luxury makeup products in my opinion. Now it has gone through at least one reformulation that I can remember, so while this isn't the classic formula, it's still a classic staple item and they made it even better in my opinion. So the reason why I love the CC Cream so much is because it has SPF 50, it gives really great coverage, and it also contains hyaluronic acid and Moringa Plum Extract, which has a lot of vitamin C. So it's kind of a skincare makeup hybrid product. You can use this as your everyday foundation. It has medium buildable coverage as long as you can find a good shade match. I'm using 30 Beige today. When I first started working at the Chanel counter, they only had three shades. It was 20, 30, and 40. And then they expanded, they added 10 and 50, and now I believe it goes up to 70, which is great. Doesn't have to be a perfect match unless you're using it as your daily foundation because it's really just going to help color correct. I like to use this as a primer because it has SPF 50, and then you don't need to use nearly as much foundation on top. You can just kind of spot treat and build up coverage in the places where you need it, and that's it. So it ends up looking a lot more natural on the skin. Now that I've spread that around with my fingers, I'm just going in with a brush so I can make sure it's evenly blended. Now because it has SPF, I would encourage everyone to watch your expiration dates. This happened to me recently. I was holding on to a couple different sunscreen products and I didn't use them in time. I went to open up the bottle and it was very chunky and it had a funny smell to it. And it was really unfortunate because I liked the product and I didn't use it in time. So I ended up throwing that away and opening a new bottle. I know this CC cream is a little bit older, so I'm gonna move this to the top drawer. I'm gonna do my best to go through this quickly and then I'll just replace it when I need to. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of my Vita Lumiere Aqua foundation. I also use Beige 30. I think this might be the only current Chanel foundation that hasn't really changed over the past six, seven years. No reformulations, no name change, no bottle change. It remains exactly the same. They used to have something called the Six Chanel Essentials. It's not something they really speak to anymore, but the Vita Lumiere Aqua Foundation was considered to be a Chanel Essential. And I can't remember the other five. I believe it was Vita Lumiere Aqua, the Glossomers, La Volume Mascara, the Le Beige Compact. The only thing I remember for sure is that Vita Lumiere Aqua was considered to be the Chanel foundation. It is water-based as the name suggests, Aqua, it's right there. And it comes in this plastic bottle with a little ball inside because you have to give it a really good shake every time you use this foundation. Not only is this a classic Chanel item, I also think it's a great introductory Chanel item because it is a lower price point than the other Chanel foundations. I believe this is still $50, I'll have to double check, versus $60 for the Le Beige or the Ultra La Tint, which comes in the glass bottle. And because it's a lighter weight formula, I think it's great for anybody who's younger or just starting to get into makeup. You don't necessarily need a full face. But I'm just going to apply a little bit in the center of the face and blend out. Vita Lumiere Aqua has light buildable coverage. But it's really meant to be a very lightweight everyday foundation. If you like heavier coverage, I would recommend the Ultra La Tint, even Ultra La Tint Velvet, the Le Beige Foundation, the Sublimage La Tint all have more coverage.
but it does look beautiful on the skin. It has a very natural finish as well. It's easy to see why people love it so much and why they haven't changed it. I think they know better. <laughs> they know better than to mess with Vita Lumiere Aqua. I, for one, would start the petition if they decided to change it. Le Corrector de Chanel is the Chanel concealer, and it has gone through at least two reformulations that I can think of in recent years, but I've always loved this concealer. The first formula I ever tried had more of a powder finish. This is a lot creamier, and they expanded the shade range, which is even more amazing. It would be nice to have another option, as much as I do love this concealer, and I do. I know it's not everybody's favorite, and something with skincare would be amazing. It's one of my all-time favorite concealers. This, the Pat McGrath Labs. I really like that LYS concealer. That's new. The reason why I love it so much, it's kind of tried and true. I never struggle with creasing, ever. Not even once. And that to me is the most important thing when it comes to concealer. That, and of course you don't want it to look dry and crepey. This does not. But at least you could prep your skin if you have really severely dry under eyes. You could go in with eye mask, eye serum, eye cream, the works. But if it creases on you, then you have to just throw it away. And that's why I did not get along with the Dior concealer, the Dior Forever concealer. I haven't even been tempted to try this new version or this new concealer that they launched. And I've seen reviews that are very iffy. So I feel like I should just save my money. Next, I'm going in with bronzer. And can we take a moment to appreciate the gold logo on top? It is not beige because this is not the Le Beige Bronzing Cream. I have the original Soleil Tan de Chanel and this is so old, but I refuse to get rid of it. What's frustrating is that I love this product so much, I've always saved it because I didn't want to run out, especially since they discontinued the formula. But now it has gotten so old, I really need to make sure I use this up. Otherwise, it will simply go to waste. Now, the original Soleil Tan de Chanel has plenty of preservatives, so this actually lasts longer, even once it's opened, than the Le Beige Bronzing Cream. Now, I am a fan of the new Le Beige Bronzing Cream, but something I don't like about it is that it develops a little bit of a crust or a film on top, and the original Soleil Tan does not. So as soon as I start rubbing my finger, it immediately starts melting. It feels really creamy. It takes me a second. I almost have to warm up the top of the Le Beige Bronzing Cream, especially if I haven't used it in a while. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the coconut oil in the base, but I'm really not sure. But it just feels very hard, and I feel like I don't get a lot of pigment at first. kind of have to just like swirl the brush for a little bit. But that was not the case with the original. With this... It's just creamy, dreamy, ready to go as soon as you open it up. And I'm not even going to fault Chanel for changing the formula because they did make it a bit cleaner, which is a good thing. We should be skeptical if a makeup product lasts for two years and it's a cream. It looks pretty good, but I always like to go back with my foundation brush and just make sure, especially in this area right here, I like to make sure that's blended because sometimes you can't tell looking straight on, but to the side, this can look a little bit muddy if it's not blended properly. There are two main setting powder options now available from Chanel, Le Beige Compact and the Loose Powder. They got rid of the pressed translucent powder, which was really amazing. I wish they still had that option. But I also really like the Le Beige, and then of course they have the Luminous Le Beige as well, which has a very, very subtle sheen to it. It's not a highlighter. It really is a setting powder for the face. So I like both. This is just the original Le Beige. It came in limited edition packaging, but this is shade 10. Yes, this is number 10, and this is one of the six Chanel Essentials, which no longer exist, but I'm going to go ahead and use my pressed Le Beige powder today. Usually, on a regular basis, I go in with my loose powder. I don't remember when they reformulated. It's probably been a few years now, but I still really like it. I received a question recently. Somebody asked if I liked the new powder. I love this powder, and I use shade 10. 
I've used shade 20. I think this is probably only my second tub of this powder because it lasts forever. Years and years and years. I use this almost every day and there's still plenty left. It is one of the best values, I think, from Chanel simply because you get such a huge tub of this powder. And then the Le Beige Compacts, I think, are really amazing. You have to be careful because it's an ultra sheer powder. So it's very finely milled, which looks beautiful on the face. But what happens is that you can develop that crust on top of the powder. Any dampness is going to form that crust. And sometimes if you're using a brush, even if it's a completely dry brush, but maybe it gets a little bit damp from your foundation or a cream product or maybe even oil from your skin. When you dip that brush back into the powder, you're gonna be transferring some of those oils and that's when you get kind of that gross, dark film that starts to form. So you can see I've kind of scraped it off there in the center. It's not a deal breaker for me. I still love this powder because it looks beautiful on the skin and I don't feel like I really need to touch up throughout the day. The one problem that I do have with this powder is sometimes this compact will break if you've had it for a long time. It might break before you've had a chance to use up the powder and it's kind of hollow underneath there. So once you start to get down to the pan in the center, it starts to crumble and crack because there's a little gap underneath, which is a little bit bizarre. Something else I forgot to mention is that this powder does tend to oxidize. So you wanna go one shade lighter if you're between shades. 10 is the lightest, so I always go with 10. looks nice and smooth. Even though it's available in several shades, it's really not intended to give you coverage. It's just meant to set the makeup. There is a powder foundation if you prefer a thicker powder. For blush, I pulled out my two favorite older shades that have been around forever. This is Jersey and Rose Bronze. Rose Bronze to me is that classic everyday blush, but Jersey is also very soft, neutral, just a little hint of something on the cheeks, pairs beautifully with a red lip. Actually, both of these do. These two colors were my go-to for such a long time and I would use these on all of my makeup clients in the chair. Now this is the old formula. I know they've changed it. I have not tried the new Chanel blush formula. I've heard it's not as good. The Jouer Contrast is iconic, so it's very disappointing to hear that people don't really like the new formula as much. So this is Rose Bronze, a beautiful, soft, slightly muted pink. It's been a really long time since I've used my Jersey blush, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one today. And I believe this one came from Nashville, so it's very old. <laughs> I really need to use it. Perfect. This color is perfection. I don't think there really is such a thing as a classic Chanel highlighter. There have been some beautiful limited edition Chanel highlighters over the years, but there really isn't one that stands out to me. So instead, I just pulled out the Rev de Camellia again since this is new. I figured we might as well use this new highlighter instead. It is so beautiful. I love the color. On me, this goes on so sheer and transparent and it just gives a very light glow to the skin, which I really like. I used to have to use eyeshadows on my clients and I would sell the eyeshadows as the highlighter because they didn't exist. Now, thank goodness we have so many options that are in line and then we have the beautiful limited edition pieces they come out with, which are very special. Like this Camellia I think is gorgeous. I just filled in my eyebrows off camera and I am picking up the Rivoli palette. This was my all time favorite eyeshadow palette from Chanel for the longest time. This particular palette is so old, but because it's so old and I've touched it and used it so much, the shadows are so soft and they're incredibly buttery. So I actually think in a way, the shadows are better than ever. They're not quite as dry and 
kind of dusty as a new palette probably from all of the oils from my fingers, but this is such a beautiful neutral palette. This continues to be one of the best Chanel eyeshadow palettes they carry. This shade in particular is so pretty. And then you have a little pearl shade, which is great for highlighting the brow bone, the inner corner of the eye. You have this deep chocolatey brown, and then this beautiful kind of taupey brown. It's a really interesting color. Now these shades do tend to pull pretty cool. So I'm going to begin by going in the crease with some bronzer. And for that, I pulled out my Le Beige Healthy Glow Illuminating Powder in the shade Sunset. It's one of the luminous Le Beige powders. And you could absolutely skip this step if you wanted to. I typically like my eyeshadows to be a little bit warmer. I find it to be more flattering with my coloring. There's not a good transition shade in the palette on its own. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this in the crease and this will also help me blend the eyeshadows later to keep everything nice and smooth. This video is really taking me back because I remember I used to use Rivoli on almost all of my clients. That was my go-to eyeshadow palette because you can create so many different looks. It really is versatile because it's neutral. You can create deeper smoky eyes, more dramatic eyes, but you can also do something really soft, kind of quick and easy. I used to love pairing the Rivoli palette with New Moon eyeshadow, and I just double checked because I wanted to see if it was still available. It says back order on Chanel.com, but now I think I have to see if it's available at the boutique, and if it is, I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up because I haven't used New Moon in such a long time, but it's a beautiful kind of rose gold eyeshadow. And that used to tie in a little hint of warmth to the Rivoli palette. It would go really nicely with that one warmer shade. Convoitis, the gold shimmery eyeshadow, that was another favorite of mine. Those are classics. Convoitis and New Moon, definitely classic eyeshadows from Chanel. With a flat brush, I'm going to pick up this shade right here and I'm going to apply that all over the lid. <laughs> this palette is so old, I'm a little bit nervous. It's okay. If it starts to burn my eyes, I'm just gonna wash off my makeup. My current favorite Chanel eyeshadow palette is probably still Warm Memories. But maybe that's because it's just been a while since I've used this. I think at this point, if you wanted to do something really fast and easy, you could maybe buff a little bit of this underneath the lower lash line and be done. Kind of the perfect one and done. I'm going to take a pencil brush and I'm picking up the exact same shade and I am going to buff this beneath the lower lash line. I've picked up a Sephora 19 brush. I like this because it's tapered. It fits really nicely in the crease and I'm going to go in with the deepest shade in the palette. So this is kind of the perfect everyday all over the lid color. This is the perfect all over the lid smoky eye color. It's a lot deeper. So if you are doing a dramatic look, you go here. If you want something lighter, kind of softer every day, go down here. And then this is your highlight shade. This is your depth. So it's a very easy palette. All of the eyeshadow quads from Chanel are easy. They kind of have that A, B, C, D structure. I'm pretty sure it assigned letters, not numbers to the shadows, but they kind of told you exactly where to to apply each shadow. It's one of the reasons why I think quads are a bit better than larger eyeshadow palettes, which can be very intimidating, very overwhelming. Eyeshadow quads are underappreciated. I'm using that original fluffy brush to make sure everything is really smooth. And then I did have just a little fallout right here. 
So I touched up my under eyes with a little concealer. That's why it looks a little bit brighter. I'm struggling today because my face is peeling, so I'm just doing my best to make it work so I don't have to start all over and just wash my face. Next, I'm going in the waterline with this Stilo You Waterproof Long Lasting Eyeliner. I wish I had Espresso because that would certainly be the classic shade, Ebony or Espresso. But this is Gris Graphite, number 42. I don't want anything as stark as black. And the only other brown I have is Psyche, which is really, really dark. So I just want a little something. And this is just a slightly metallic gray. It's not silver, it's gray. And because the eyeshadows lean a little bit cool, I think it, it goes with the look. It's a great alternative to black, I'll tell you that. Doesn't look silvery, doesn't even really look that metallic, but it kind of fills in that gap in the waterline. To line the top lash line, I'm going in with this Le Liner de Chanel in shade 516. It's a deep brown. This is what I'm going to do on the top lash line and then Le Volume Mascara, of course. I almost forgot to highlight the eyes, so with a precision brush, and this is a Chanel Contour Shadow number 26 brush. Not sure if they still have this. I need to update my Chanel makeup brushes, but I'm going into the pale shade and I'm going to highlight the brow bone and pop this in the inner corner of the eye. It is such a gloomy day out there. I was planning to run a few errands and take you shopping with me, but that is not gonna happen. It's very soft and subtle. This shade would also look really pretty all over the lid. The last step is lips and we are going to do a classic nude lip. I think with Chanel, you could do classic red. There are so many classic shades of lipstick. Pirate, Boy, Adrian, number 402, what else? Gabrielle, number 444 in the Rouge Coco and Arthur, both classic reds. Mademoiselle, 434. That has got to be one of the best-selling Chanel lipsticks of all time. It's kind of that perfect mauve nude. Mademoiselle would be the equivalent to Chanel of a Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury or Divine Rose for Pat McGrath Labs. The classic, the go-to. Adrian is just a little bit more of a peachy nude, less of a pinky nude. And this was always my number one favorite. And I used to put this on all of my clients, all of my special occasion clients, whenever they wanted a very glossy nude lip. I know things have to change. That's the one constant in life. Nothing remains the same. And there are a lot of changes coming to Chanel Beauty. I hope they do not get rid of the Rouge Coco lipsticks. Or if they do, they just change the packaging. Maybe change the formula. I don't care. Just don't get rid of these colors. I think of any of the formulas, this might even be the best shade range because it's not 20 shades of red and then two nudes. There are berries and deeper tones and browns and nudes with different undertones. There's a lot more variety, I would say, with the Rouge Coco than any other formula. First, I'm going to line my lips with the Beige Natural Lip Liner. The reason I don't use this every day is because I keep it in my purse. I had to retrieve this from my purse earlier. Which is why usually whenever I'm doing my makeup, you see me using the pillow dock because that just sits here in my little makeup station. It's just the perfect nude. It's so elegant looking. You can't talk about Chanel Classics without talking about their lip glosses, the former Glossomer, now Rouge Coco Gloss. This is one of those changes that I actually approve of. I wish they brought back all of the same original shades, but I do really like the Rouge Coco Wand. This is a little bit better. The formula is less thick and sticky, kind of hugs the lips. This is 166. I 
As a final, final step, I just want to balance my cheek and my lip. So I'm picking up just a teeny tiny bit of jersey. And I just want to make sure that they match, they balance each other out. I'm now back with the complete look for the day. My hair's done, my makeup's done, and overall, I love the foundation, the CC Cream Vita Lumiere Aqua combination. This lip is amazing. Probably the best nude lip combination from Chanel. The only thing that's new on my face, I believe, is the highlighter, the Reb de Camellia highlighter. I think the best part of today's video is that it forced me to use my Rivoli palette, which I have not used in such a long time. And now I'm remembering why it was my favorite for so long and why I love these eyeshadow colors. They're not too warm. They're not too cool. I think it creates a very elegant makeup look. It kind of reminds me of shades that you would find in the Glam palette from Natasha Denona if I had to compare it to another palette. If you have that larger palette, you could probably create a similar look. I believe I've seen these shades in that palette, but it has the same appeal. I think it's, it's perfect for every day, for something more special occasion, and it just looks really sophisticated. The only thing I don't like is the fact that my skin is peeling. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up whenever I lean closely, but this area right here, you can see there's a lot of dryness and my skin is peeling underneath, but what can you do? So that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing my thoughts on some of these older classic pieces. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I want to hear from you. What are your favorite Chanel classics? Drop me a comment. We'll keep the conversation going there. Next week, I will be doing a full face of my favorite Tom Ford makeup. So be on the lookout for that. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.